Hey guys, it is me, Victoria, and I wanted to share with you something that was weird and embarrassing that happened today. So basically, if you guys don't know, I have a rejection club, and I wanted to do something new at the meeting today, and I, and at the rejection club, we usually do rejection therapy challenges. Today's meeting, I want to teach them the acceptance paradox because it was so profound for me. And I wanted to try to do it in like the externalization of voices kind of thing that like Dr. Burns does. Well, I talked with my boyfriend about doing this before the meeting. He was like, don't do it. Like, that sounds really bad. I'm just like, um, I don't care what you say. I'm doing it. We kind of got in a fight. Well, then I tried to do it and it, I tried to explain to them. I explained the acceptance paradox. I said, you know, I just explained it all. And then it came time for me to demonstrate it with this guy's negative thought, which was, I'm boring, which is so ironic because that's one of my biggest insecurities. I'm boring. But I couldn't give a good enough defense because then he started hitting me with, I'm 100% boring in all ways. And I kind of cracked and I didn't know how to respond for a second. And I, Dr. Burns, he warns about this, saying that it actually took him a long time to be able to defeat everything. Sometimes he couldn't defeat it in the session, and then in the middle of the night, the way to defeat the thought would come to him, and he would, like, leap up and be like, Eureka, I found it, and then it would work in the session. So <sighs> the problem is the guy, he started feeling really bad because it was his insecurity, and everyone was, like, exposed. Everyone was, no one could defeat his insecurity. I tried, but it wasn't, like, good enough. So, basically, it was really embarrassing because I just felt like I didn't do... I I was teaching them something, and I couldn't even do it good enough. The ironic thing about that is that by using the acceptance paradox for myself... I accepted that and I admitted that it wasn't going well, I wasn't doing the greatest job, and that's okay, that it happens, I want us to like work together, but to be honest, I'm kind of embarrassed about it now. But I feel this is just more power about the acceptance paradox, but because because by admitting that I'm embarrassed, I avoid a catastrophe of being like of panicking, of beating myself up with negative thoughts. I think that this is exactly the problem I had when I was in high school, where I would get like OCD like thoughts. Because I would do something embarrassing, and instead of Humbly admitting, hey, I said something awkward, and I messed up and did something embarrassing. And that's okay. I would not be able to think about that thing I did. I would just shut it out of my mind, and every time I even tried to think of it, it would cause severe pain. And then I would get these horrible thoughts, like just, you're an idiot. And like it was like swearing at myself, and it was so intense, and it just felt like I was going crazy. Just compulsive thoughts of like, like I was like emotionally abusing myself, basically. And I think that the reason is, is because I couldn't admit, hey, I, uh, I messed up. I'm not smooth all the time. Sometimes I do really stupid things. Sometimes I try to explain a concept and I make a fool of myself. And people, it was kind of funny because like a lot of people just like ran out. No, all right, that's exaggerating. They didn't run out, but when it was done, they were just like, I'm out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh my God. Like, I'm actually so happy that I'm able to laugh about this because... It, it was kind of embarrassing. 
So, but this acceptance paradox, exactly the thing I was trying to teach them, allows me to just realize, hey, I'm the kind of person who makes a lot of mistakes. In fact, I made a big mistake. In fact, it was pretty embarrassing. In fact, people basically ran out. In fact, they're probably never coming back. And, <laughs> and that's okay. I can be that guy. It's like a lot of times in The Bachelor, when people do something bad, they'll use the excuse, that guy you saw, that's not me. I'm not that guy. All right. What you, <laughs> it's always hilarious to me, but it's like, instead of saying I'm not that guy, I'm saying, yeah, I I'm that guy. I'm that guy who like makes a fool of himself. <sighs> and that actually is so freeing to me. You know? So, I can just kind of laugh and be like, I made a fool of myself. And I can admit that. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. And actually, I think in the meeting, there was a moment of panic when I realized, oh, shit, like, I don't really know how to respond to this. And they're all looking to me as, like, the all-knowing guru, Kind of. I mean, probably not, but they are looking to me to know the answers because I'm the one trying to tell them something that's effective. And I can't do it. And in that moment, I kind of panicked. And it's like, it could have gone one of two ways. Because in the old days, I would have just been like, shame, humiliation. I am making a fool of myself in front of everyone and... I'm so embarrassed right now, like, I just have to cry. But instead, I feel I took the road less traveled by. <sighs> and I just admitted, hey, that didn't go well, guys. Sorry about that. Let's move on. <sighs> Eventually, I had to admit that. I didn't really know how to describe it, but things just kind of got out of here. In any case, we ended up continuing. I said, everyone who wants to leave can leave. People who want to continue and do rejection challenges stay. We had a really great time. Like, we ended up staying for two more hours. So I think some people, I know they got a lot out of it. Some people did it. So it's like, some people hated it, some people loved it. That's okay. And I'm the reason they hated it. That's okay. So I just feel this is a much more healthy attitude for me to be open about my flaws. Like, no matter what the result was, no matter if people loved it or hated it, I was open. I was honest. Maybe I was even an example for them of, like, the acceptance paradox since I accepted that things weren't going well. I, I don't know. But anyway, I feel the acceptance paradox is still working for me because I am proud of how I handled making a fool of myself and I think I became more humble because I realized I need more practice okay I need to work on defeating all kinds of negative insecurities and negative thoughts and critical thoughts I need to just get up an arsenal of really good responses I have good responses for some not as good responses for others and even Dr. Burns like I was saying said that's normal so it's okay and I just hope they still let me have the uh, meeting at this place I'm holding it at. They don't, like, kick me out. Or, like, someone, you know, calls up to complain and says I sucked. But even if I got kicked out, that's okay. I'll just start up again somewhere, all right? Um, everything's good. And most importantly, I preserve the image of myself as somebody who is free to make mistakes. Somebody who is free to make a fool of herself. And that is really quite wonderful. It's like, in a way I feel liberated to make more of a fool of myself and do all the things I was scared 
to do for fear of making a fool of myself. I'm just like, hey, now that I uh, made a fool of myself, what more do I have to fear? Maybe I could just keep the streak going, keep doing stupid stuff, and keep having fun. So, you know, like just take a wild chance in other ways. And I don't have to fear about um, looking stupid because, hey, I'm the kind of person who looks stupid a lot. So what do you guys think of my attitude? Is it a good mental attitude for life? I think so. That's why I tried to explain it to these people and it went horribly wrong. How ironic is this? I don't know. So anyway, guys, uh, talk to you later. Bye.